Now, you are uh, very excited about high-speed rail service coming to the United States of America. Um, why are you excited about it, and what exactly is uh, high-speed rail? It just sounds like the trains are going to be able to go faster. Uh, in, in essence, the trains could go faster, but more um, more importantly, while I'm enthused about the uh, potential for high-speed rail, uh, what I would like to see and what our organization would like to see is higher speeds now. As a matter of fact, uh, we have a, a brand new sticker that we're passing out that says, I support high-speed rail and 90 now for the Empire Corridor. The official maximum speed on the uh, upstate part of uh, the Empire Corridor, that is between Schenectady uh, and uh, Buffalo is 79 miles an hour. Uh, unfortunately, with all the ferry traffic and other things, the average speed is only 58 miles an hour. There is some, some disagreement between the host railroad uh, and the government officials as to what the maximum speed uh, allowable should be. Uh, the government officials say that it should be uh, 110 miles an hour. Uh, actually, we have parts of the system now uh, east uh, of Schenectady that are 110 miles an hour. For example, that single track between Albany and Schenectady uh, has an allowable speed limit of 110. There are parts uh, of the system south uh, of Albany uh, in the Castleton area uh, where 110 is the allowable speed. Uh, much of the track uh, south of Poughkeepsie uh, is uh, actually can handle 120 miles an hour uh, service. The problem is that west of, of uh, Schenectady, the host railroad uh, said that they... Is that CSX? That's CSX. Right. Uh, said they would prefer to have a maximum speed limit of 90 miles an hour uh, for several reasons. First of all, they were concerned about the intermingling of the freight and passenger service. Secondly, at 110 miles an hour, you have to have higher track standards. Uh, and CSX uh, was reluctant uh, to uh, deal with the cost of maintaining track to higher standards. CSX, uh, for the most part, uh, runs its trains at about 40 miles an hour. Uh, actually, less than the New York Central did uh, <laughs> in the previous century. So uh, there, that led to an impasse, uh, which still exists uh, in the area west of, uh, of uh, Schenectady. We're happy uh, that uh, agreements have been uh, made, which allow all the improvements east of Schenectady to go forward. Uh, Are the Ampac, Amtrak trains currently in existence now capable of high-speed rail? Uh, they are capable of uh, higher speed rail. Uh, the engines that are used can do 110. The, most of the passenger cars are, are rated that way. Some of the old ba uh, baggage cars and diners uh, can't, can't keep up with that. Okay, the old turbo the, trains that we engines, used to the have. Motors, the motors. Oh yeah, yeah okay. the old uh, the old turbo trains that we had uh, in New York for many years uh, were rated at 125. Right, I, I've seen pictures of uh, New York Central had some uh, trains that were jet powered. They did have a few on an experimental basis. Wow, they must have. <laughs> Uh, they were fast but very unreliable. Okay. Uh, so they were short-lived experiments, uh, uh, unfortunately. Um, and at that point in time, it would have. Uh, it's it's a shame that the uh, technology was not available to uh, to maintain higher speed rail, uh, because the New York Central had four tracks across 
uh, New York State. I remember uh, those. Uh, two for passengers, two for freight. So I think they still have uh, something like that in the Fonda area, don't they? Uh, they probably have a, a couple of remnants uh, for that, but for the most part, it's two and three, uh, two and three tracks. Now, for the economy of New York State, there is going to be some exciting developments. Uh, what happened is the governor of Florida, they had uh, this appropriation from the federal government to uh, improve the uh, rail system and get high-speed rail into Florida, and he decided he didn't want that. So suddenly that money was available, and part of the money turned down by Florida is coming to New York State, and that's good news for uh, rail construction between uh, the city of Rensselaer and out to Syracuse and Buffalo, right? Well, I'm certainly uh, thankful to the governor of Florida uh, he's, he's for, a great man. for his uh, contribution to the, uh, to the New York uh, passenger rail improvements. We have had several uh, waves, starting with the American Recovery Act of 2009. Additional monies came in uh, to us uh, through the fiscal year appropriations in in 2010. Uh, this year, the influx is caused by the uh, the willingness of of places <coughs> such as Florida and Wisconsin to uh, to give up uh, money, uh, some of it free money. Uh, that is to say, no state match required. Uh, that money has been reallocated to states that are willing uh, to improve uh, their rail service and have a potential for doing so. So thank you, Wisconsin. Thank you, Florida. Uh, now, I understand the city of Schenectady is going to get a new train station? Yes, there have been plans for a number of years to build a new train station in Schenectady. And more importantly, there's been some reconfiguration, so that will produce uh, an extra track at the Schenectady plat uh, in the Schenectady station. At one time, there were four tracks. Uh, one track was taken out uh, a number of years ago. Creates uh, operational uh, problems uh, because freight service also passes through that station. As a matter of fact, uh, in uh, August uh, I came back from a, a meeting in Utica, and uh, as it turned out, uh, we had three trains coming through the Schenectady station within five minutes. Filled up all both of the passenger platforms. One train had to be held out uh, because uh, there was no platform space. Uh, the third track is not reachable; uh, does not have a platform right. adjacent to it. So, Schenectady is going to get an improved station. Uh, they are going to get uh, an additional. Uh, track and uh, the Schenectady station is built uh, adjacent to a viaduct, uh, which has, uh, shall we say, a few leaks. Uh, and so uh, the water damage and the water infiltration is going to be repaired. The, the capital area has done very well. Uh, we now have funding approval for the second track. Uh, between Albany and Schenectady, that removes a bottleneck, which is uh, which is very huge. Uh, basically, uh, since it is one track, uh, only one train can go over it at the at a single time. Especially since there are no passing sidings, so that normally adds uh, can add up to twenty minutes of delay at Schenectady or Albany until that track is vacant. With the second track, uh, you'll be able to have movement in both directions. The Al Albany Rensselaer station uh, is finally going to be finished. Uh, when the Albany uh, station, which is actually owned by the Capital District Transportation Authority, was built, it was designed for four tracks. But because of the, uh, the land holdings and other things, the fourth track unfortunately passed through two earlier stations, which were still standing. <coughs> Obviously a barrier. Uh, the station, those stations have been removed. The fourth track originally um, envisioned will be built, uh, and uh, that will improve services tremendously. Also, there will be new signaling in the Albany station, which is uh, much of the signaling 
in the Albany area uh, is uh, of New York Central vintage. Now, the city of uh, Syracuse has a very nice train station. Yes. But if you go out to Rachacha in Rochester, they... Uh, I think Amsterdam has, not to put down <laughs> Amsterdam, but I think Amsterdam has a, a better train station than Rochester. What's with that? Because Rochester is certainly much bigger than uh, Syracuse and Amsterdam. Right. The, it, actually, the good news is that the Rochester station is going to be rebuilt as an intermodal station, servicing both uh, buses, uh, long distance and and local and the Amtrak service. That project uh, has uh, started already with the design phase, uh, and we'll be seeing some uh, some service uh, there. There are some projects out there in Syracuse uh, and in the Buffalo area, Buffalo Rochester area that do uh, are still out there. They are projects which need doing. They are projects uh, for which uh, federal monies and state monies have been uh, allocated. Uh, the problem is that final agreements on those projects uh, are not yet completed. And we are hopeful that uh, the federal government and the host railroad, CSX, uh, will be able to come to some agreement. The stumbling block uh, is the, the 110 versus the 90 mile uh, issue that uh, was mentioned earlier in the show. But uh, the the, St uh, the Syracuse area is looking at 18 million dollars of improvements in that uh, in that rail uh, corridor uh, within the city, uh, and that will. In addition to helping uh, move passenger trains through there, uh, the freight train uh, movements uh, will be uh, much improved. Between Buffalo and Rochester, a big item uh, on the agenda is $58 million that has been uh, allocated for the start of a high-speed track, 110-mile-an-hour track. Uh, between uh, Buffalo and Rochester. The first phase is a segment uh, of this new track which would be uh, built. Uh, there, it, is not, it doesn't exist there now. Uh, this would be a, a from scratch build. Uh, eventually uh, the, se the full section between uh, Rochester and Buffalo, roughly 60 miles, will be done. But we're in the first phase now. Hopefully, uh, an agree agreements will be reached uh, so that that project can go forward, benefiting uh, the uh, people uh, in the area. Actually, uh, the folks in Syracuse um, and uh, Buffalo uh, are see some benefits from passenger rail right now. For example, businesses in the Buffalo area uh, provided uh, just over four million dollars uh, in services to Amtrak, uh, goods and services to Amtrak uh, last year. In the Syracuse area, almost two million dollars uh, of goods and services were purchased uh, by Amtrak in the Syracuse area. Uh, certainly uh, those, uh, the passenger counts in those areas are lighter, uh, about 140,000 in, uh, in Syracuse and about 150,000 between the two Buffalo stations.